all-new Land Rover LR2. Hello and welcome to Tech 101. I'm Eric Hesseldahl, Senior Technology Writer here at BusinessWeek.com. This is our weekly podcast segment where we answer your questions, not mine, yours, about technology, whatever's bugging you and doesn't make sense. Email them to us and we'll try to sort them out for you in plain English. The address is tech101 at businessweek.com. Now our email this week comes from Ellen in Spokane, Washington, who's getting a lot of funny emails. Dear Tech 101, I've been getting a lot of emails about eBay auctions I know nothing about. I do spend some time on eBay now and then, but those emails keep asking about items I've never sold. Obviously they're fake, but is there any way to stop them? So well, on these emails, are hard to stop. They're basically a kind of spam known as phishing. And by the way, that's phishing spelled with a PH, not an F. Don't ask me why, uh, but that's the way it's spelled. And what we're talking about here are basically fraudulent emails. The idea is to try and fake you out. Now, uh, why do these emails keep coming? Well, if you've seen our previous segments on spam, this is spam with a financial motive. The idea is to fake you out and get you to give up some personal information about yourself that somebody on the other end of the communication might use to steal from you or do something uh, in your name that you wouldn't otherwise do. Uh, so your usernames and passwords are really the keys to the kingdom here. Uh, you might see these kind of phishing emails involving eBay auctions or access to your PayPal account or even your banking information. So one of the things I want to show you, these emails are hard to stop, um, but chances are if you've had an email address for a while, you've seen a bunch of them, what I want to show to you today is a little bit about how to detect them and uh, therefore ignore them, how to tell whether it's a phishing email or not a phishing email. So I'm going to just use a couple of basic rules of thumb that have worked for me. So we're going to take a look at inside my Gmail account. Now, if you've seen my previous podcasts on the subject of spam, generally speaking, I like to recommend that if you aren't already using Gmail, it's a really good way to uh, get your spam situation under control because Gmail has some pretty good filters that will uh, eliminate a lot of that spam. And in a lot of cases, it will flag phishing emails. So I'm going to show you some examples of that right now. First off, I'm gonna, I got, I have my own eBay-based uh, phishing attempt right here. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And you can see already Gmail is flagging it with a warning, saying, well, it doesn't seem like uh, this message is from who it really claims to be. eBay and PayPal, I think, are probably some of the biggest targets of phishing emails, basically because the account information is so valuable. So um, you can basically see what's going on here. Um, if you've never heard or never participated in an auction like this, I certainly am not in the business of uh, selling unusual glass cods bottle with marble in neck, that's a pretty good indicator that uh, that's a phishing email. So you don't want to click on anything in that message. Now, if, uh, if, you're, if the email indicates that it does come or does somehow in check your account, the best thing to do is to actually go to eBay separately, sign into your account, and look to see if there's been any suspicious activity. And if it is, then contact eBay and let them know what's going on, and they'll help you sort it out. Another thing to do is when you get one of these emails, and if you have any questions and you're just not sure, forward it to spoof at ebay.com, let them sort it out. They'll send an email back to you telling you whether or not they think it's fraudulent or real. Now, let's talk about mail that comes from or pretends to come from a bank. Um, I'm going to go back to my spam box here, and I've got one that claims to be from Bank of America. Now, let's just lay aside the fact I don't have an account at Bank of America. Let's just pretend that I do. And this might make me just a little bit worried because it looks like it comes from my bank. So let's go ahead and open it up. And I'll display the images. And as far as I'm concerned, this looks like it could 